I'm Ann Stewartson. I'm the archaeological advisor to Lancaster and District Heritage Group, which is a fairly recent role, isn't it, yeah. over the last couple of months. Um, my daytime job, I'm a professional archaeologist and um, illustrator for Oxford Archaeology North. Um, I'd like to give you a short background about our community group. Uh, we're a very fledgling uh, community group at the moment. Uh, Lancaster and District Heritage Group formed in October 2014, so only 18 months ago, as a result of a series of outreach uh, armchair archaeology sessions organised by a local government initiative called Beyond the Castle. Uh, these informal events raised much imp- interest in the local community and LDHG formed with 10 members in the consultant archaeology uh, about 18 months ago. Um, and our consultant archaeologist was to advise and assist on activities and planning activities. Uh, the group met regularly every fortnight and soon the membership started increasing and now we're on well over 40 like-minded individuals. Um, it was towards late November 2014 that uh, the, the, the suggestion of running a small-scale excavation was mooted at the meeting uh, on a recreational area in Lancaster known as Key Meadow and it's situated between the Georgian Key frontage and uh, the scheduled monument of the Roman fort and the castle. Um, so it was well within the beyond the castle's remit for further study and investigation. Um, we decided uh, to investigate some anomalies um, that had come upon previous geophysical survey uh, uh, work undertaken by Oxford Archaeology North on behalf of Beyond the Castle uh, that summer in, in 2014. So we'll go on to... <laughs> so this is the group. Um, by early 2015, the organisation of the excavation was, was beginning. Uh, it was also around that time that I got more he- heavily involved with the group and assisted, we were saying earlier about the research question, uh, one of the things we did was produ- producing our own research agenda for this particular area called Fo- <laughs> Football Factories and Fishing, a research agenda for the quayside and key meadows in Lancaster. Uh, it was from this document that various other activities that we've, we've done have, have uh, occurred uh, within the remit of it, uh, including last summer, early last summer, we did uh, uh, now and then photography sessions. So all the historic photos from that area, uh, we then went out one afternoon and recreated them for the modern image. So we could see what had gone, what had changed, uh, to keep the photography record, the photographic record up to date. Um, the excavation itself on Key Meadow was going to fit within, well, did fit within this research framework, uh, being on a tract of land, like I said, uh, behind the quay, uh, and it was also between a number of factories and industrial units that have been there since Georgian times. Uh, and it's always, as far as we can see, since the quay was built in 1750, uh, been an area for recreation and sporting activities. To go any further in the excavation um, planning process, we needed to find some finance, finance, you know, first time ever. None of us had travels. Well, I did, but none of the rest of you had travels. So various channels of funding had to be explored uh, to, to enable the excavation to occur. And as a group, Lancaster and District Heritage Group was very fortunate to be awarded a grant from the Duchy of Lancaster Benevolent Fund because it's classed as being in their remit and their land. Uh, and we got that by mid-May last year. And then it was all systems go getting everything organised for September. And this was when we found it's difficult. Uh, the last three months involved a very, very steep learning curve um, for all the committee members Uh, We had to find the correct paperwork, make sure it was up to date, uh, risk assessments, written scheme of investigations, insurance, uh, the application to dig. Um, All had to be done in a correct way. Um, Advertising, uh, other things that we we then needed to to, uh, think about. Local press coverage making sure they actually listened to what we said and didn't go back to the office and then write up some, to something completely different, you know. We were digging a, we were digging a Saxon 
fort that was 2,000 years old at one point in our local paper. And in the paper, we've got a picture of a Norman knight in front. Oh, yes, that was it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thanks for that. Front page, front, front page. page, completely wrong. Um, we also needed to cover staffing, call for volunteers. How were we going to do that? What package were we going to give them? Uh, community engagement, because we didn't just want to be digging there on our own. Um, we knew people would be interested. How were we going to deal with the general public uh, who were interested, wanted to know what we were doing, why we were doing it? Uh, every meeting, we, we found... Oh, I, I missed the important one here. Health and safety and welfare. A lot of community groups don't think about that. We were lucky. My other half's got the local pub that backs onto the field, so we, we had that sorted. Um, every meeting, we were finding something else that we inadvertently omitted and it was it was getting quite stressful wasn't it uh it all com culminated though in a very successful dig in mid-september the first research dig in lancaster for 40 years and the first ever archaeological excavation on key meadow and it was also it's also been proved to be of much higher archaeological significance than previously thought um but that's another story and i'll pass you now on to andy our group chairman, and he'll uh, he'll tell you the hassles. Oh, will I? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Andy Riley. I'm the uh, chair of Lancaster District Heritage Group. I have a great passion for the history of my local area, but prior to the key model dig, I had no archaeological experience whatsoever. So I'm probably in a rather large minority in the room here. Um, we the issues we encountered um, in the community group fell into broadly into five areas. Firstly, with the funding, we eventually received, as Anne says, uh, funding from the duchy, although it was significantly less than we had applied for. Uh, we approached a number of local businesses, but were unsure of the procedures and protocol of how to do this. Um, in discussion with the groups uh, since the dig sort of thing, we thought um, there should be relevant avenues to go down with regard to funding. You know, we should be aware of the different outlets, which would be local and national contacts that we can get in touch with for that advice exactly what we need the money for uh, to include the post X report which we didn't actually factor in when we did the dig and then suddenly thought oh hang on you know so you learn by your mistakes uh, and again an independent advisor to advise on things like that would be fantastic because we were all literally winging it at the time as regards excavation management which is the second point um, all m most of the members uh, or the majority of the group were, were new to this um, there was no clear understanding of the various rules and responsibilities and also there's no uh, correct a uh, central access to templates any document and documents uh, or, sorry templates of documents enabling us to complete the documentation to the current legislative uh, requirements so moving forward from that maybe to develop an online resource to assist community groups to in uh, include up-to-date downloads uh, for the templates to be used include risk assessment security protocols and all other aspects that are involved with that. To ensure a written, a written contract is in place with clear guidelines, expectations of level of assistance for any paid contributor of the dig, because that was another issue that we, uh, we ended up uh, coming across. Um, it appears that there are a number of different post-excavation templates in circulation. Maybe they should be standardized, and obviously that's come up a couple of times this afternoon. Um, Confirmation that any report publishes the property of the group and cannot be altered by other parties to suit their own agendas. Again, it's another issue that we've come across, which hopefully will be rectified. Um, any other party referring to that report must credit the group as well. Uh, regards to resourcing, uh, no clear guidelines on equipment, welfare of the team and excavating visitors, site security. We undertook our own risk assessment for the dig. Uh, so again, a, a, you know, something as basic as a list of relevant equipment for the dig, because obviously, you know, we're all we're not all archaeologists, you know. Uh, advice on health and safety risk assessments, not only for those excavating, but also the visitors to cover all aspects of legality. As regards public engagement, it was a very uh, successful aspect of the dig, with over six hundred visitors signing a visitors' book, and even some bringing us bags of biscuits and Kit Kats, which was very really much appreciated. <laughs> Um, and also, eight, we organised um, eight tours uh, from local schools, uh, local uh, junior schools uh, of the site dig. Again, there was a lack of clarity regarding disclosure and barring uh, service, DBS, um, and 
other things like data protection and photography with the bin children. Um, thankfully, all the school visits were accompanied by a teacher at our request, so the CRB kind of thing was covered on that. Um, with regards to public engagement, following on from the great public feedback, we are unsure if we will have access to the fines to display um, as we wish to put a community display on and undertake some talks and presentations. And a lot of the local Lancaster museums and libraries are under threat at the moment. Um, jargon translation. Work. What does that say? <laughs> this is out of the document that we were all asked to read for preparing the summary. You know what it translates to? Make things easier to understand. <laughs> <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> you know, but when the, this is the, this sort of thing for blue sky and uh, management talk at the moment, plain English, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> um, one little thing, it wasn't too much of an issue, but uh, initially remember that community groups are not fully qualified archaeolog archaeologists. On a couple of occasions, a couple of members of, of the volunteers came to us and said they were talked down to by a couple of professionals, which, you know, they need to understand that all the, the people that were there had given up time, taken time off work and doing it completely free of charge. So yeah, they might not know something, but instead of sort of laughing a little bit on, well actually you should know that. No, we didn't, that's why we were asking. Uh, all members gain so much from the experience, we hope it will be the first of many future projects. The planning and excavation of the dig, like Anne said, was a steep uh, learning curve for all involved. Just like to pass you on to Anne now for the uh, decision. Summing up. Summing up. So yeah, as, as mentioned previously, um, we found quite a hefty void of advice. Uh, protocols and specific paths for community groups setting up. Um, can I? Yeah. Um, we can't be the only community group that's in that situation. Um, as a group, it, it was felt that we needed to do everything as, high, as to a higher standard as possible and to the best of our abilities. And this couldn't have been achieved without the good-natured advice and assistance from Oxford Archaeology North, which, well, Oxford Archaeology full stop, I can see some faces around, um, and Adventures, who uh, we were hoping Brendan would be on after us, but yeah. Um, and they kept the organisation morale high when our consultant archaeologist was out because he's got other commitments with other communities uh, and abroad a lot of the time. So when he was out of the country, they were helping um, when we couldn't get in touch with him for advice. So um, I think that the slide's fairly self-explanatory of how we see... We will have missed other niches to go to the hub, but we, we would suggest that there is somewhere for this information to be a one-stop place, have addresses or contacts for uh, people that are willing to give advice, preferably free, because it's community voluntary projects, you know. Um, and from a professional point of view, I feel it's important to keep the standard of community volunteer-led archaeology as high as possible. Uh, in an economic climate that we're all knows happening, uh, and for quite a while it's, it's been happening that research and academic archaeology projects are diminishing. They're not like they were sort of 20 years ago. Uh, and, and this shortfall seems to be being filled by volunteer-led community projects. Um, it makes it even more important now than ever to make sure that things are done properly and recorded accurately to enable future research. Um, most of the research style excavations in our current times are, I've just said this, are undertaken by layman based volunteer groups such as ourselves. And as professionals, I think it's our duty to make things as stress free as possible um, through the organisation, the excavation, and the reporting to enable a higher standard of recording. Uh, and analysis post excavation, which we've done the post ex yes. training thing as well, and report writing bits so they could see it all the way through to the end. And at the end of that, I mean, that's what we all want, isn't it? We want to know that the archaeology is being looked after and it's there as a resource for the future. 